It's an interesting position to be in where you're dealing with something that is so fundamental of a physics and chemistry level that will have in the long run an, an, an impact on, on how you get from New York to Chicago. You know, will, your, will the airplane ride you're taking continue to produce the greenhouse effect or is it having no effect because we've been able to understand the physics at the molecular level? Our understanding will help to, to then change the way we go about this to be more efficient and to, to in, in the long run, produce a, a better product for our society. We're gonna have to blend, we're gonna have to mix, we're gonna have to bring other feedstocks into the mix. How we learn how to handle these here with the challenges, say, that occur in a, you know, in a corn stover is gonna inform how we're going to deal with the challenges that are gonna come in as segregated municipal solids and wastes that are gonna come in with a great deal more variability. Everything we learn here is not just applicable to corn stover, it really is applicable to, to all of the, the emerging feedstocks and all of the potential feedstocks that could ever come online. How are we gonna operate a waste to energy facility to fully exploit the resources that are available and tailoring the ultimate blend to uh, what you have available at a given location uh, makes each one of these opportunities a very site specific problem and that's exactly how we've designed the biomass assessment tool to address these kinds of issues. We're not just solving problems that are out there right now, we are using everything that we're learning to make this advanced pre-processing system and it starts now. Part of the reason why we have such a big modeling effort into understanding these impacts is so that we can predict based on the feedstock variability, what was the big harvest that year? That's gonna dictate what your feedstock was, also economic factors, what's the cheapest thing, what's the cheapest blend you can make. And so you can't run a whole suite of experiments at the industrial scale every year to understand what the optimal operating parameters are. You have to make that investment in being able to give time uh, give resources to be able to set those experiments up, execute well on those experiments, be able to chase the failures, um, there's interesting stuff there, um, be able to get stuff into the lab, outside, test it quickly, all those things are really key and we're here to be able to do that. The thing about algae is it works for food and for fuel, right? And this whole energy, water, food nexus is very important. It's gonna be a problem. We need protein, we need carbohydrate, we need lipid, so that in the future we can, you know, solve some of these problems we're gonna have as we get to nine billion people. Sometimes we may not be innovating in that it's something totally new or whatever, but it's, a, but it's taking that and applying it to a different area. As an example, the petrochemical industry has solved a lot of problems, so there's some things we don't need to reinvent. Well, you need a, quite a bit of leeway uh, to innovate and solve these problems. We quickly move small-scale experiments into continuous processing so that we can encounter the problems, and they'll be even magnified uh, when they're at the smaller scale, but that's okay. Uh, because we can, we can at least learn from those and then we know what, uh, when we go to scale, what kind of scaling issues we have and what scale is going to be the most appropriate. If, if we are not as scientists paying attention to that small little tiny peak in our analysis going what is that, then that's when we're going to miss those really great discoveries. So I think a lot of the innovation that we have in the future is really going to be in terms of what is going to not just maybe replace the petroleum sources of those same chemicals and materials, but, but may also lead to you know, some perhaps entirely new chemicals and materials that, that would be able to, to contribute in some really unique ways to the bioeconomy, some entirely new products that we just have not uh, found before. I think if we look back on this and it's 20 years from now and we've made some really great breakthroughs that I can say that I was a part of that and I contributed to that. I agree. I also, I love learning new things. Every day I come in here I learn something new. All the new procedures and analysis that we do here, it's really exciting. To me, innovation simply comes down to continuous improvement. We continuously improve uh, the products uh, that we develop, we listen to what consumers need and want but also how we use that knowledge to improve our environment, uh, help, help to watch out for and, and live up to our obligation to secure a, a good future for future generations.